You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast by Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom, Dr. Frederick J. Long, Dr. Mario Melendez, Dr. Jennifer Noonan, and J. M. Smith. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I am Michael Halcom, and in this episode, we're thinking about Hebrew vocabulary, which means this is a vocabulary episode with a bent toward Hebrew. Today we're thinking about the Hebrew word that is spelled sin vav mem. Sin vav mem. Mem. Uh, so this is sum. Sum. Sin vav mem. And sum means to put or to place. If you are watching along, I'm going to put stepbible.org up on the screen and you'll be able to see it. Uh, some examples of this. Um, so in Genesis 2 8, for example, we have an uh, sum, an occurrence of sum. Uh, it's talking about the Lord God uh, put or placed, um, or sorry, the Lord God planted rather a garden in Eden, and there he put or placed the man whom he had made or formed. And it's a straightforward use of sum. Uh, it's referring to just putting or placing someone or something. In a specific spot, uh, you find it also in. I'm going to keep going. We have an occasion here in Genesis 4:15. Um, we have, if we keep scrolling, so there we have vayasem. So weird things happen with the vav or the vow, as I often say it here. The vav, or if you want to say that vow. Um, we have, yeah, another occasion in Genesis nine twenty three, Vayasemu, uh, Vayasemu. Um, we have a, a bunch of occurrence uh, <laughs> occurrences. So let's look at another one here. Uh, we have Genesis one thirteen. This is a very interesting form. You can see where it gets kind of wonky. Uh, in terms of trying to figure out what's going on, um, esame, so uh, esame menu, esame menu, sorry, esame menu, esame menu, esame menu. Man, I am mispronouncing that. Esame menu, esame menu. That's that's a really fascinating form you have there. Uh, lots of things going on, and then just in the next one, psalm, psalm. So, uh, and then in uh, Genesis twenty one eighteen, we have asimenu again, and twenty two six via sem. So you you this is tricky uh, because you have the morphing name. You also have that vav that is often replaced with a yod, and uh, yeah, the scene can be mistaken for a sheen. And uh, then you have all these prefixes and suffixes that are causing the letters to uh, have other letters in between them. So it's doing, it does some wonky stuff, but in general, this idea of means to put or place someone or something, as I said, in a specific place. Um, You have other examples of this in scripture. I mean, later in Genesis, the Lord God puts a bow in the sky, um, places a bow in the sky. Elsewhere, you have um, uh, you have things like, uh, I think it's in Isaiah, around the 60s, where it talks about uh, appointing um, unto those who mourn in Zion and giving them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so there in Isaiah, or Isaiah, uh, sum is used in the sense of appointing or giving someone uh, something in exchange for something else. So that's kind of interesting to think about. Um, you know, even in Proverbs, we have this idea of like, uh, think about the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. There you have um, a form of sum, and it's there the ideas of establishing something to make it firm or stable determined fixed set uh so the idea yeah the idea there is it can have a lasting 
right impact a significant and ongoing impact or something so just a pretty interesting word uh sum and uh it's actually hard to look up too so uh, in terms of like going to the keyboard here in hebrew and typing it it could get a little bit confusing um uh depending on what software you're using what keyboard you're using uh because the scene and sheen can uh often get mixed up so but you can see there if you're watching on the screen that this occurs in about 625 times so it's not a rare word um it's an important word and it's something that we should be familiar with yeah so uh i think i think i'm going to stop there and say um yeah, that's it for soon. I hope that helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glossa House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House, language resources for the global community.